So a big question is, is what do we call all of this that's taking place? Some people call it big data, some people call it the Internet of Things, some people call it the industrial internet. The manufacturing of the future, industry 4.0. In the end, it is to create a smarter industry process where different components can make their own decisions, they can feel, sense, and also communicate with uh, other devices and people as well in order to uh, uh, optimize the performance or to facilitate maintenance and control. The wording is not the most important thing. The important thing is to make it happen. There's this really important question, why is all this happening now? And there's really a three-part answer to it. The first part is an exponential improvement answer, basically Moore's Law. Uh, computers, chips, memory, processing, bandwidth, all the elements of computing. The second part of the story is a, is a data story. It's just about this big data universe that we are living in now. That's incredibly important for a very simple reason. Data is the lifeblood of science. It's how we learn more about the world. It's how we test our theories. It's how we see if our experiments worked or not. We need data for all of these things. And the third part of the story is about the fact that innovation happens when you recombine existing building blocks. So what the guys at Google did a while back was take an old innovation, a car, combine that with a huge amount of sensor data, some very powerful computers, and some clever software, and they came up with something that had never been seen before, a car that drives itself. Well, all the machines that are out there in the world running the global industrial system have to be maintained. Um, so think about your car. Um, you know, the, the manufacturers will tell you that you ought to bring your car in at 20,000 miles and at 30,000 miles and 50,000 miles. Um, and that's the way that the industrial machinery has typically been uh, maintained, is on these set schedules. Well, that is going to change because we have more information about those specific machines and exactly when problems arise. So the ability to be more accurate in how you go about maintaining these machines is going to grow and have really important implications for the industry. In a few years from now, a tool operating in a machine would be able to tell to a logistic system, I need to be exchanged. It's time for a new tool to operate instead of me. And everything will occur automatically. The tool would be exchanged, picked up by some robot or a machine, sent to this recycling, and a new tool will come to the machine. We humans have a huge amount of faith in our intuition, our expertise, our experience, our judgment. We have way too much faith in these things. So the really tough shift that we have is to become a lot more humble about our own abilities and about the abilities of the allegedly smart people around us and to learn to start trusting the data, following the data, becoming much more sincerely data driven and much less driven by the great phrase that I, that I use all the time now is HIPPO, which is my new favorite business acronym. It stands for Highest Paid Person's Opinion. And it's how a lot of companies make a lot of their decisions these days. Hippos need to become a lot more scarce. Well, the key is you can generate all this data and you can do all this analysis, but it ultimately really needs to get back to people so they can make decisions. Um, and so there's a whole area that's now um, becoming very interesting and exciting, which is around human-machine interface and human-centered uh, design. One area that's really exciting is the, um, the introduction of augmented reality technologies into the industrial space. People struggle making a mental jump from 2D to 3D. So when you are looking at data and information and you're trying to, in your mind, um, superimpose that onto the physical world, that's a, that's a very big challenge for most people. And what augmented reality does is enable people to actually visualize that data or visualize that information in what we call in situ, which means, you know, in the actual situation, um, in the real world. And so we bridge that gap between data and the physical world.
I think there'll be lots of winners in the sense that if you embrace these technologies, it can it can help you perform your work better. So think about the advent of um, word processing for creating documents. Would you say who are the winners and losers in that? Well, I think everybody won from being able to use word processing technologies, right? And I think a similar situation will be true in the industrial space. Basically, it is to be open-minded and to see the opportunities around the corner. But you need also to dare to take the risks and to start the needed development in time. If you do so, then the business opportunities will also appear.